Here's what I call Ian, who's the singer with Southern Death Cult. Hello, Ian. Hello. Bradford is, is that your hometown? No. Birkenhead and Merseyside. Is that where you come from or the, the, the rest of the band as well? I come from. That's the band from Bradford. So how did you all meet up? I'm going to start basically, really, and find out about the Southern Death Cult. When did you all meet? Um, let's see, March. March 81. We all, we started then. Um, I was sort of traveling around the country. I ended up in Bradford after following Poison Girls all over the place. Oh, really? Yeah. How did you meet up? Well, I was, well, I was living in this house, right? And it was, um, was an Aki drum and bass player. They'd been playing together for quite a while. We signed to get a new band together. And then uh, they asked both to join, and then I was in the house, you know, and one day they said, you know, we'd like to try singing for us. The house they used to practice in, so I went down and, you know, started singing for them. What happened from there? Yeah. Did you start writing together right away, or were you doing other people's songs at first? No, no, we, did, we started straight away with our own stuff. We've always done our own stuff. And did you get, have the opportunity to play live in places in and around Bradford? Uh, not, not for quite a while. Well, the first thing we did was for Yorkshire Television. We did it down at a club called the Wayflower Club in Bradford, but then after that, there, there wasn't many venues, and this one venue opened up called the One in Swell Club in Bradford, which is shut down now, and that's where we did our first gig. We played sort of um, college around there and stuff like that, but really, the, most of the venues are closed down. Well, that's sad. Is that still the case? No, there's a new venue. Um, Nick Topcheck, this guy up here, he's got a couple of venues going, he's got about five venues going, but sort of, you know, they had to go about about 400 capacity he's got about four or five different things he's got sex scan children on so because ah. Bradford is not really a town one would equate really with modern music um well it's sort of in uh, northern industrial wasteland type thing you know so there's, no, there's quite a few people here that are into modern music I guess yeah. <laughs> Well, in Smash Hits, in the current edition, yeah. uh, Mark Allen has written about you, and he talks about the kind of instant devotion that you've enjoyed, reserved only for the likes of Killing Joke and the late theater of hate. Yeah. I mean, how do you feel about those comparisons? Uh, I don't know, really. I suppose, I suppose the, the, the audience have got the same sort of awareness, but I don't think there's any sort of particular audience go along with them bands. Uh, mm. I don't know, it doesn't sort of... You know, make me thrilled or anything like that, really. I think comparisons with uh, people like the Sex Pistols and the Who, you know, really stimulate me, but not really killing Joker too, I think. Mm. The single, the 7-inch and 12-inch version of Fat Man and Moya, is something we've been playing a lot. I mean, I've been playing Fat Man because it's my favorite side. Do you have a favorite side? Uh, well, I mean, Moya means a lot more to me. What's that? Um, well, it's about my, sort of, my teenage life that I grew when I was growing up in Canada. You grew up in Canada? Yeah, I was there for five years, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that, because I, I, I did as well. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Whereabouts? I lived in Hamilton. In Ontario? Yeah, in Ontario right. for five years. My dad and my sister's still over there. For like, a, you know, this sort of big drug culture over there. And it's very, I mean, you know you, what yourself is like over there. It's very sort of, it's really laid back. <laughs> and, and very insular. Yeah. And so Moya came out of what your experiences in... Moya came out of my experiences in Canada and also the way that North American Indian culture has been destroyed in the States, you know, the genocide of a nation, and the fact that the, the United States has is, is sort of blossomed in, to, in such a massive Babylon, really. Mm. Well, that sentiment presumably also comes out in the song Apache, which we have in session. Yeah, well, Apache, Apache is the same sort of thing, you know. Um, the North American Indian culture is a very, very special personal thing to me, which a lot of people have sort of, uh, I don't know, sort of prostituted me for it, really, and set me up with it, like the enemy and things like that, with, and sound people, you know, sort of, sort of things, uh, red skin rock, uh, we have no reservations, you know, sort of, sort, of, sort of things like that, Ray Lowry's cartoons out of the enemy, stuff like that, mm. and, uh, you know, it really makes me so, it's like one of my biggest influences. So I look to North American Indian culture for a lot of inspiration, but it is not, you know, it's not sort of the key thing in the group. It's not, it's just like one of my influences. Mm, an interest of yours, okay. I'm going to play a track from you in session called Flowers in the Desert, and I know this is one that you like. Can you tell us why and, and what it's about? It's more or less about the decay of the Western world. And as the Western world decay, I mean, every day something else happens, right? And the fact that there are, there are a few people who are aware of what's going on, and I sort of tend to look at that as upon the flower that is blossoming amongst all the sort of the sand, right? The desert, as the buildings are crumbling to sand, the flower blossoms in my hand. All right, well, we'll come back. Ian from Southern Death Cult on the telephone after we hear this in session. Mm -hmm. 
here with the band is on the telephone. Ian, what about the actual songs? You were telling us about the sentiment of this track, Flowers in the Desert. I mean, the band has a very dramatic name, the Southern Death Cult. That's cool, right. And the, and the, the, the songs themselves are fairly meaningful. Do you, I mean, do you see yourselves as a, as a doomy band at all? No, not at all. I think it's uh, not doomy. I think we, we, we reflect what's going on around us at the moment. Um, situations, whether it be political or personal, alienation, um, the way cultures are being pulled apart, the way people are fighting amongst themselves. Um, there's very, very little common ground for people. People shut themselves in houses, you know. Um, we're, we're sort of reflecting that. I would not in any way say that we were doomy. I'd say the situations around us are doomy, but we are, I think, inspirational. We have a lot of energy, you know, we've got a lot of life. We, we really want to live our lives. We want to celebrate our lives. And I think that's what, you know, more or less what we're about is the fact that we, we're not trying to create any particular thing. We're not trying to contrive anything. We're just going to go and do what makes us feel good. The name of the band is, is curious, though, because uh, it's a very heavy-sounding name, and it, it doesn't sound like a celebration. Where did it come from, the Southern Death Cult? Cool. It's a subtle awareness about, you know, what is going on. It's a reflection, the Southern Death Cult, all the controls, um, all the established... All the established controls are in the South, the banks, the government, um, the record industry, the record business, and it just reflects that. In no way are we saying, oh yeah, you can kick the system in, you know, with the Southern Death Cult type thing. Mm. What was, we're not saying that at all. We are reflecting exactly what we see. You know, we, I think the only change, if people want to change things, the only change that come about is in changing yourself. Something that people can actually get to grips with is seeing you live and making their minds up for themselves. And That's right. You, you have been playing live, and I've got some concert dates here. The 17th Liverpool, yeah. 18th Retford, Nottinghamshire, uh, 19th Southern Death Cult will be in Aylesbury, 21st London, uh, 22nd Derby, 23rd Newcastle, 24th Hull, and at Manchester's Polytechnic on the 26th. Yeah. You've got an album coming out soon. Um, well, we're supposed to be recording an album during the summer. I don't know, exactly know when it's going to come out, but there will be an album coming out. And will you have a single to bridge the gap between the Fat Man and yeah, the... There will be a single coming out. Do you know what the, the song is going to be yet? Um, I'm pretty sure it, it possibly could be All Glory. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, I wish you well, and I look forward to meeting you face to face one day. Okay. Right, come thank you. I'd like to very much. Actually, Mike Hawks, who produces this program, lives very near Aylesbury. Yeah, maybe so he... you could come down the front, you know. I think that would break out of a lot of barriers down. Somebody like you come down the front and started dancing. That would just be amazing. Uh, I like, you haven't seen me dance yet. I don't mind coming down to the front and seeing you, but I'm not sure about the dancing bit. Maybe I'll jump <laughs> up and down for you. <laughs> All right, I'll come. I, I look forward to seeing you. Okay. All right, then, Ian. Thanks very much. Good luck, Hank. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.